So yes, so today in the next 20 minutes or so, I would like to deliberate on this topic, hard lung interactions in mechanical ventilation. So my friend Asif has already introduced me, so I'm not wasting time on that. So my agenda would be so to tell you a little bit about what is heart lung interaction and the physiology behind it and what are the clinical implications? Why do we need to know about it and what are the pitfalls? So first we'll start with some uh, terminology. So we are all conversant with these terms like preload and afterload, but these are very difficult physiological concepts to understand. Actually, some say that preload is volume, some say it is pressure, but actually it is neither volume nor pressure. It is actually the wall stress or the wall tension on the left ventricular mus muscle just before or after the aortic valve opens. So I will discuss in a little bit more after this, uh, in later on. So afterload is also the wall stress on the left ventricular muscle just after the aortic valve is open. So just when the system starts, the wall stress on the muscle is actually the afterload. And what is transmural pressure? Transmural pressure is pressure, simply speaking, it's pressure inside minus pressure outside. So when we are talking about the left ventricle, so if you can see yourself standing inside the left ventricle, so the pressure inside will be the intraventricular pressure. And the pressure outside is the pericardial pressure or the pleural pressure because the lungs is very adjacent to the heart and the pleura is adjacent to the pericardial. So the transmural pressure is the intraventricular pressure minus the pleural pressure. What is ventricular interdependence? So we know the heart is a composite organ, but actually, uh, so to say for the sake of this topic, if you can visualize the heart as in two parts, the right part, the, the left part. So the right heart and the left heart, although they are within one organ, they actually uh, do not undergo the similar kind of pressure changes during any time during systole or diastole. And they are actually separated, especially the right ventricle and the left ventricle, as we all know. They are separated by a intraventricular septum, which is not a rigid wall. So depending on the pressure on either side of the septum, it can bulge into either the left side or the right side. And these things happen. So they work in parallel as well as they work in series. Series means what? The blood that is the venous return that comes to the right side of the heart. And then <coughs> it is ejected into the pulmonary circulation. And the same whole of this cardiac output comes back after a few beats uh, into the left side. And then again, the left ventricle ejects it into the systemic circulation. So the right heart and the left heart, they work in parallel as well as they work in series. What do we understand when we talk about MSFP? It's the mean system, systemic filling pressure. Is the venous pressure in the systemic circulation in no flow state. So if there is no flow, there will be some blood in the venous system. So that much blood, the kind of pressure it will generate is the mean systemic filling pressure. And there is another pressure working on the venous system that is the stressed circular circulatory volume. What is that? It is the extra volume if, you, if we push in into a, into a compliant vessel like a vein. So on top of the MSFP, it will cause some stress onto the wall. So that is the stressed circulatory volume. It has got also got implications. We'll talk about that later. So now uh, um, coming to the determinants of the heart-lung interaction, there are mainly four main determinants. The effect of phasic interaction in the intrathoracic pressure on large vessels as well as the cardiac chamber. Second, the effect of lung volume in the pulmonary circulation. Third, the changes occurring during the ventricular interdependence, what we talked about right now. And fourth, effect of changes in intraabdominal pressure, which also has got implications on the intrathoracic pressure because the intraabdominal compartment and the thoracic compartment are separated by a diaphragm, which again is not a rigid wall. So the pressure changes on either side reflects on the other side as well. Now a quick look into why do we need to look into all these? Because of this equation. This is the holy grail of critical care. This is an equation depicting the rate of oxygen delivery to the tissues. 
as we all know we are aerobic organisms 